struggle all around. Boots on the ground, every direction. We got something going down in the country, to the streets, within everyone I meet. But the struggle of the mind is the most powerful kind. Are we dying off or are we living on? Do we warrior up or just give in? No, we need to keep hunting. Hunt for security, hunt for safety for our kids, hunt for knowledge, hunt for discipline, hunt for compassion, hunt for success, hunt for longevity, and hunt for humility. I mean, we always have a choice, but not all of us are hunters, but I'm gonna feed my kids in this long, cold winter. Nanaska mud, Nanaska mud, Nanaska mud. Me, I'll send me my Thank you for this life, for the will to survive, for the abilities and the opportunity to achieve. And this, my friends, is a good kill. Gixipa <laughs> alpisis ni sigasun. Muscade First Nation, Ochigia. I'm come out of Treaty 6 territory, along with some of my, my fellow colleagues, and I'm really grateful to be here today on Treaty, Treaty 1. This is a great opportunity and an honor to be able to share some of the little things that I've learned in the short time that I've been on this earth. I've lived in Saskatoon for most of my life, I was actually, I started out here for the first five years. Um, I don't remember much about Winnipeg, but I know it's a pretty cool city. <laughs> but what I want to do, um, being a person who has always been urban, always living in the cities, I wanted to share with you that experience and how I utilize that idea of spirituality in the city. And it took me a long time to really focus and to understand what spirituality meant to me in the city. And the way that I can describe that to all of you is by thinking about that term that we have called worldview. And when we think about worldview, we have different worldviews happening in the city all of the time. And we come from a place, as a Plains Cree woman, I come from a place of understanding that is different from the mainstream, or that is different from the European worldviews. And it's always been that way, and it still is that way. But now I come from this place where I'm not ashamed of that. Because as a young girl, I grew up being very ashamed of the difference we had, our different worldviews. But now I recognize, as a mother, as a woman, as a person living in the city, how important it is to maintain and to hang on to that idea of worldview. And the concepts that we have that differ have managed to cling on to us and follow us through this genocide and through this colonialism. And one of these, the most important one to me at this time in my life, is that concept of land, aski, as we say in Cree. The idea of land is so much more than just the trees we see outside, the dirt we see on the ground, the grass. To us, it's very much alive and full of spirit. It is knowing and capable of helping or hindering us if we don't recognize its power and maintain that reciprocal relationship with it. This land cannot be owned. We've always known that. And when we try to control and place ownership on this land, we see things happen. We see the rebuttal in environmental disasters, in devastation. And in our language, one of the Idle No More co-founders, her name is Sylvia McAdam, she talks about natural laws. And one of those laws is Ochiniwin. And that's the law between the land and the humans. So this is very much alive. This, this law is in existence right now. This is part of our justice system. And I acknowledge that because that's all I knew growing up. 
I was lucky to be a young kid introduced to ceremonies at a young age. I was lucky to be introduced to language at a young age. I was lucky to know a lot of those facts about myself and my history, my Plains Cree history. Unfortunately, I didn't acknowledge that because in the city, I always felt ashamed of who I was. So lucky for me, in elementary school, I really used this fair skin that I have as my privilege, as my way of hiding, hiding from the fact that I was a native person, hiding from the fact that I was an Indian. And it's shameful for me because now I realize how damaging that was and how damaging that is for all of the young kids in grade two, grade three, whatever grade that are still feeling like that. And now as a mother with two young kids, I see that. And I do everything that I can to talk to my son about the land, to talk about our natural laws, to talk about how amazing it is to be here for thousands and thousands of years and to still know who we are amidst so much that has happened to us. We all know that history. So now in my 30s, I don't waste my time feeling ashamed. I don't waste my time feeling like I need to tell everybody. I just do it. I just do what I've always done and I do it with all of my heart. I acknowledge the land and I take my kids along with me. There's hunting ceremonies. There's all types of ceremonies that exist in that, herb, that rural area. And so what we get a lot of times is we misunderstand the idea that traditional things can happen in the urban environment. But that's not true. We can be very much indigenous in this environment. Whether we're going for a run, grabbing a Starbucks, sitting on a bench by the river, reading the latest copy of The Walrus, <laughs> stopping at the Interact Bank, the TD machine, to grab some money. All of these things are happening on the land. <laughs> They're all happening on the land, so whether or not you admit to it or not, you're connected to that land. We're not separate from it, and it still has a lot more power than we ever will. So how I do this is in very creative ways, and the more I accept this fact that we are connected to this land, the more I really find that spirituality, I find that place. Because it's not written in a textbook. There's no guidebook that tells us how to be spiritual in the city. When I was on my lowest, in my lowest phase of my life in my 20s, and I would feel so rock bottom, and just guilty, and sad, and hungover, and horrible, and ashamed, I remembered a, a ceremony the tobacco ceremony, where you take a little bit of tobacco and you put it on a clean place in the land. And you pray and you ask for guidance. You ask for strength. You ask for help. And I picked up that tobacco one day. I think it was probably the smokes that I had, you know, <laughs> from the night before. And I took that tobacco out and I put it in my hand and I was shaking. And I took it out to the river in Saskatoon. We have a river, the Saskatchewan River. And I took it out and I looked around and I looked for what I thought might be the cleanest place. Maybe a beaver had passed through, but I don't think anyone else did. <laughs> and I sat down and I put that tobacco down and I prayed and I cried and I prayed and I cried. And that was a turning point for me. Because when I put that tobacco down and when I walked back up to the street, back up to my apartment, I felt like this huge sense, this huge sense of awareness that just sat there and it just embodied me. And it was from that point on that I always did that tobacco ceremony anytime something happened, anytime I was going through struggle, anytime I heard another story about one of my cousins, one of my family members, I would take that tobacco for them. And every time I walked down the street, I acknowledged those bugs. I, I acknowledge that grass, even if that grass is not indigenous, that Kentucky bluegrass, is it? <laughs> it's everywhere, but I accept it and I welcome it to our, to our land. 
I collect and gather the songs of the birds of the street when it rains and I, and I smell that first rain when it hits the pavement. That's spiritual to me because that's all I know and that's still a sign from creation. That cement in some way is natural to me. I've always had these opportunities to travel to ceremonies and I'm really grateful for that. And when I can't make it, I make my home, my ceremonial grounds. I smudge, I light a fire, I acknowledge those that are fasting and that are in ceremony. The full moon can be seen right from my backyard in the middle of the city. I pray to that. I have my moon ceremonies. I reflect and I give thanks for all of the opportunities that I've been given for my beautiful children and for my partner. I'm so grateful to have this health, this spiritual health in this metropolis that is Saskatoon. And it is with this connection to the land and in the city that I continue to survive and to carry on our knowledge and our ceremonies to the best of my ability as a proud Nehiao Isquil. And I'll always continue to live this indigenous life and this indigenous spirituality, even when I have a grande Americano in my hand. Hi, hi. 